Li Sen Zen, age 65. He is a photojournalist who for 10 years, beginning in 1966, recorded the cultural revolution that swept through China. He photographed 100,000 pictures. It's been said that there is no other person with such an extensive archive. A Communist Party leader has his head forcibly shaved. Because his hairstyle was similar to that of Chairman Mao Zedong, the man was thought to have political aspirations. A Buddhist temple being destroyed. The destroyed image of Buddha was cruelly left exposed. Authorities ordered all photos which would damage the image of the Cultural Revolution to be confiscated. Li Sen Sen, risking great danger, continued to hide his photos. He believed that it was important to record each event as it happened and to keep a permanent record. He was born in 1940 in Dalian and was raised in that farming village in Sendong province. At the age of 23, he became a photographer for a newspaper. Three years later, the Cultural Revolution began. Li Sen-Seng became the leader of a rebel group, which was to become the driving force behind the revolution. Chairman Mao himself ignited the flame that started the Cultural Revolution. This excited me tremendously. The struggle of revolution would make us strong, and we would cultivate a social view that would put an end to the bourgeois class. I thought this was a wonderful concept. But Li sen began to harbor doubts about the revolution. This was because attacks against those who spoke out against the revolution were much too severe. Moreover, Li sen lost his position of leadership within the rebel group due to internal friction, and he was sentenced to hard labor in the countryside. Li Sen-Sen relocated to the United States in 1996. He brought an enormous number of negatives from China and, in 2003, published a photographic collection. In the early years, the Cultural Revolution was inspired by idealism, but the years following brought great pain. Just what did the Cultural Revolution mean? While organizing his photos, Li Sen-Sen groped for an answer. My strong desire now is to meet as many people as I can and to ask them what they think of the Cultural Revolution. If I seek out those people appearing in my photos, I think I may find some answers. It has been 40 years since the start of the Cultural Revolution. For the people captured in those photos, what kind of lives have they lived? How will they reflect upon the Cultural Revolution today? In April 2006, Mr. Li headed for China. With the photos as the basis for the trip to his homeland, we follow Li Sen on his month-long journey. August 1966. This year, Chairman Mao, in pursuit of an ideal nation based upon socialism, put into motion the Cultural Revolution. In 
He declared that the old culture would be eliminated and those individuals pursuing capitalistic ways would be overthrown. Young people, one after another, formed rebel groups. They wore red armbands, chanted Mao's sayings, and called themselves the Red Guards. The Red Guards systematically destroyed symbols of the old culture, such as churches and temples. They began to denounce intellectuals, and the power elite. Colleagues and even family members began indicting each other to avoid being targets of denouncement themselves. Mr. Lee was swept up in this sea of confusion. This is Herbin, the capital of Heilongjiang province. On the border of Russia, it has a population of 9.7 million people. At the time of the Cultural Revolution, this city was the scene of many violent clashes. Mr. Li photographed in Herbin and Beijing. Mr. Li first headed to the Buddhist temple in the center of town, Jili Temple. His first feelings of uneasiness with the Cultural Revolution began here and still remain firmly etched in his memory. In August 1966, Mr. Lee witnessed the Red Guard's uncontrolled, destructive behavior at Jili Temple, which shocked him. Forty years ago, when the Cultural Revolution began, things were terrible in this area. The plaza in front was filled with large crowds, and people were tightly packed, sitting in front of this gate. The Red Guards, posting a slogan of the destruction of the Jile Temple, overtook the temple and began its demolition. Their attack was something intense. They smashed the image of Buddha into pieces and took the sacred scriptures outside to burn. Mr. Lee photographed the monks who were ordered to stand in front of the gate. Among the many monks wearing robes, there was a monk in the Mao jacket holding a cap in his hand. Back then, I took one more photo. Here it is. This monk is smiling while looking at the elder monks. When I took this photo, I suddenly remembered something. Before the monks were brought to the temple gates, the Red Guards came surging into the temple and destroyed the images of Buddhas and such. It was this monk who guided those Red Guards to the locations. It was this monk who led the Red Guards to the temple that contained sacred scriptures and showed them where the images of Buddha were stored. The monks were driven out from the temple and forced to work in a factory manufacturing nails. The monks were finally able to return to Jili Temple after the Cultural Revolution ended. Mr. Lee heads towards a room in one section of the temple where the monk who had worn the Mao jacket is said to be living. Thank you. 
。师傅，这个可以跟司法大师说的话吗？ The spiritual master is 93 years old. He has been bedridden for seven years. By his side is principal priest Jing Po. The spiritual master has taught Buddhism to Jing Po for 20 years. Did the master ever talk about what happened back then? He talked a bit about it, but I don't know anything about what actually happened here. Mr. Li had heard that the spiritual master was still mentally alert and spoke to him personally. Spiritual master, at that time, the monks were attacked by many people and publicly humiliated. That caused my heart to grieve so much. My visit now, by imposing on your kindness, is to ask what your views are of those times. I know they were painful memories, but would you be willing to talk about them? Please take care of yourself. Thank you very much. The spiritual master did not speak one word of the incidents from that time. The spiritual master returned to the Jili temple after the Cultural Revolution ended and put his efforts into restoring the temple, which had been left in ruins. Afterwards, Jingpo invited Mr. Li to his room. Away from the spiritual master, Jingpo shed some light on the historical circumstances. You remember that the emphasis was on the poor. They became the flag wavers of the Cultural Revolution. The spiritual master didn't have a formal education, and he came from a poor rural area, so he was chosen by the rebel group. The master once said to me, the rebel group used me, and I was put into the position of having to manage and direct the other monks. Of course, others didn't look favorably upon this. When I arrived at this temple, there were some who said that the master was a terrible man. The master did not refute any of the charges. Today, the master continues to carry the burden of the past. Though the spiritual master only said, don't ask me anything, these words struck me as very painful. At that time, I was unable to stop the violence and could only record it with my camera. Beginning in 1963, Mr. Li worked for the Heilongjiang Daily, the Communist Party's newspaper, for 19 years. The company building hasn't changed. At one time, there were more than 300 people working here. Mr. Li unexpectedly runs into several retired employees who showed up at the company for a meeting. <laughs> How are you? Thanks to God, I'm 75 years old. I'm already 68 years old. At that time you were a real workaholic. 
You shot more photos than anyone else and persisted in getting the newspaper to print them. Coming here, I remember the pain and the hardships of those times. Mr. Lee asked to see the room where he used to work. It's been 24 years since he quit the newspaper and last entered this room. Here's the faucet. This used to be the dark room where we developed the photos. I see the faucet has been turned off. My desk was over there. My desk would have been exactly in this area. Here, Mr. Lee and four other cameramen did photo processing, developing and drying photos. He said that extreme caution was used whenever photos showing violence towards the executive officers of the Communist Party were handled. Some photos could not be released because of the bad public image they would produce. I developed those photos after the co-workers went home and rushed them to the dryer. At the same time, a printable photo would always be at hand. That way, if someone came in, I would put the harmless photo on top of the other photo. I tried to look like I was doing my regular job while working overtime. That's how, during the midnight hours, I was able to develop photos, cut negatives, and hide them. In 1966, as the Cultural Revolution began, Mr. Lee formed a supportive rebel group within the newspaper company and became the group leader. The Cultural Revolution was not just an ordinary revolution, but an extremely large one. It was Chairman Mao himself who ignited the flame that started the Cultural Revolution. This excited me tremendously. The struggle of revolution would make us strong, and we would cultivate a social view that would put an end to the bourgeois class. I thought this was a wonderful concept. This is a photo of Mr. Lee in February 1967, when he was the leader of the rebel group. Mr. Lee was the MC at a meeting and denounced the members of other political factions as being unfit for Chairman Mao's revolution. The following year, he married a colleague within the rebel group and shortly after had two children. <laughs> 